Hello, good evening and a warm welcome to Business Live. Coming up, good news as city strengthens against buy 20 pesos against the US dollar to sell at 13 cities 40 pesos at the retail market. But more oil marketing companies adjust prices of professional products as most of them move to fully recover costs due to city's depreciation in October. And E-Levy hits revenue of MTN mobile money business as the firm paid more than 2 billion cities in taxes to government ending September this year. This is Business Life with me, Pios Kujubaka. Let's now look at the stories. More oil marketing companies have adjusted prices of petroleum products at the pumps from today. But with the city's rate of depreciation slowing over the past week, our consumers are assured of some relief in the coming days. My colleague George Yaffe has the rest of the story. The top three oil marketing firms, that is Guel, Total and Shell, have all adjusted their prices at the pumps. Based on their price quotes, all the three oil marketing firms are selling a litre of petrol at 17 Ghana cities, 99 pesos. Diesel, on the other hand, is going for 23 Ghana cities, 49 pesos. For some, the development can be described as interesting, looking at the fact that all the three major firms are now quoting the same price for all the products, especially in the case of Guel, which had in the past absorbed part of the cost. But it now appears that Guel is passing the full cost to consumers. According to most of the oil marketing firms, one of the major factors driving the hikes is the recent sharp depreciation of the Ghana city. This has led to some action where the prices could be reduced based on the fact that the city's rate of depreciation has started slowing against the dollar over the past week. However, some of the oil marketing companies have argued that it is still early days here to give any assurances to consumers based on the current development on the foreign exchange market. Now, the Ghana city strengthened once more again by 20 pesos against the US dollar today, November 1, 2022, to sell at 13 cities 40 pesos. This is the fourth consecutive day in which the local currency has improved in value against the American currency. The city sold for 13 cities, 60 pesos to the dollar this morning. Now, checks by Joy Business at the Forex bureaus also indicate that the city strengthened against the pound and the euro. It is going for 14 cities, 46 pesos against the pound and 12 cities, 80 pesos against the euro. Now, the recent strong value of the local currency may be due to the boost in the supply of dollars coming from the first tranche of the Coco syndicated loan and the likelihood of an international monetary fund deal before the end of December. Now, joining us via Zoom with his perspective is the head of research at IC Securities, Courage Buti, um, with more. Grateful Courage, you could join us. What, in your view, could be accounting for the 20 pesos appreciation against the dollar we are seeing? Well, good evening to you and your listeners. Um, a point of correction, I'm the lead researcher at uh, GCB Capital, not IC Securities. Great so hope. please note that for um, the future, yeah. Yes, um, the way the currency depreciated, I think, over the last four weeks or so was more than just the fundamentals, really. It was principally speculative activity driving it to where it got to, really. And so the trend we are seeing now is to be expected. Any news that suggests that the city codes are staying in a run of appreciation would actually cause most of those speculators to sell their dollar holdings now to realize the profits that they intended to make really. And so you realize that the first tranche of the Coco syndication loan has flown through. Uh, the Bank of Ghana has engaged the market operators in the last few days really. Regulations have been tightened and monitoring and um, monitoring has also been kind of um, upped a bit. And so you realize that all of these will play a role. And the uh, president, I think in the last address also assured that the Bank of Ghana has committed to supplying the FX needs of the market at least from now till the program is, is, is agreed. All of these are signals that the CD puts extent and a trend of appreciation over the next few days or next few months, really. And that naturally relative uh, traders really on the market, which I believe is accounting for the trend we are seeing. All right. So how can we sustain this to ensure a further drop in the coming days? 
Well, I mean, I think it will be natural. Um, it could continue until now. I see the interbank rate around 13 CD now. And so naturally, that should be suggesting a, a support level for the CD. And so I expect that it, this trend could continue until maybe we get to the six, uh, 13 CD level. And then that is where you might begin to see some sense of stability because that Bank of Ghana read becomes, if you like, the, the floor, the lowest level it could get to now unless there is some adjustment on the market. The thing also is that you do not want volatility really. If the CD goes up sharply to about 15 and it's all of a sudden falling sharply to 9, 10 levels, which I do not see happening anyway, it's max of volatility, which again is not good because it's not predictable. So I guess it might fall to the level uh, that the interbank rate is looking at now and then maybe stabilize around that level going forward. Now, so what would you say? I but then, I mean, mm -hmm. just to add. All right, go ahead. Just to add that we are in the Yuletide period. Um, seasonal demand pressures could even come up going forward, really. So chances are that this trend could even be just temporary where seasonal demand pressures could take over again. The market would always be looking out for the next signal to determine the direction of the exchange rate, really. But at this point, I think the fast uh, slide in the city uh, has kind of ended, we should see some sense of stability from now going forward. I could appreciate a bit to a, a stable level and stay there for some time before the next news moves the currency. All right, so I was coming to that. So um, what really would you say are the projections in terms of the city's outlook for the rest of the year? Um, I, I think it is still quite um, uh, unpredictable because we we are we are still in the in not out of the woods yet. I think we are doing about 50 50 percent depreciation now, and I see um, the city ending around that level by end of year. Really, it shouldn't be significantly different from the 13, 13 5 levels by end of year as things stand. That is for me to say that there could be some more appreciation to come in the next few weeks before stability. And so if there is a reversal in trend, I should go back to around the 13.5 level as things stand now. But I must add cautiously that, I mean, the trends and the market um, dynamics are still very uncertain and it's very difficult to pinpoint and figure that this is where we are going to end. All right, so um, Boti, would you say that um, looking at the level of appreciation, this in a way would signal some positive uh, news to um, both domestic and uh, foreign investors, would you say? The market is having mixed signals now. I think at least there's clarity in our minds now that if at all government wants to pursue the part of debt restructuring, it might not include principal. Now, I think with that clarity, uh, people are aware now that any such action could involve interest haircut, could involve tenor extension, really. It, it leaves you with a, a clearer mind now to make a decision as to what you want to do with your investment. I think that should bring about a bit of calm going forward. Uh, but then, external markets are still very attractive. Um, the exchange rates seem to be a bit more predictable now. Uh, and uh, but then we are still not really out of the woods so it is still up to investors now what to decide or what to do given the clarity we've had on how debt is going to go but i just want to say that principally it will still depend on the debt sustainability analysis the results that it to turn out and what decision government makes but within this time there is at least some clarity but still a certain level of uncertainty and that should drive market sentiment really but i expect a bit of calm on that uh, 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 death. I'm afraid we've lost um, courage, Boti, um, sharing his perspective with us on the performance of the CD for this week. And Courage Boti is the lead researcher at GCB Capital. All right, so I'm told Courage is back. Courage, if you are back, I kindly conclude your, your remarks for me. Yeah, so what I was saying is that I, I expect that, yes, there is some sense of clarity now as to what will happen, but, I mean, it's up to investors now to decide what they want to do or not to do. I still feel that uh, there is still some sense of um, jittery on the market, uh, but the re portfolio reversals we've seen in time past should slow down a bit. Uh, uh, I do not expect a return to the bond market 
immediately, at least on the primary market, immediately for a lot of people, but it will be secondary market moving volumes and there are still opportunities there to be taken. So I believe that investors will focus on that area more. Uh, the T-bills has underperformed in the last few weeks, really. I think the last three weeks, there has been shortfall in demand relative to the target government set. This does not immediately reverse it because I think there are still issues of liquidity. Uh, but I believe there, there will be some sense of calm, relative calm going forward. All right. Thank you very much, Courage Boutique, for, for your input this evening. Let's move away from that and do the story. Telecom's giant MTN Ghana has finally admitted earnings from its mobile money business and has been impacted negatively by e-levy. This was captured in its third quarter earnings released to investors. George Biafé has more in the following report. MTN in its third quarter statement noted that what it secured from the mobile money business since the beginning of this year hit 1.4 billion Ghana cities. The telecoms giant in the statement maintained that the slowdown in its profit of this business was largely influenced first by the introduction of the e-levy for May this year and decision to reduce the fees on its person-to-person -person charges by some 25% due to the introduction of the e-levy. Despite this challenge, the total number of its mobile money users was up by more than 16% to hit 12.4 million subscribers ending September this year. The contribution of the mobile money service to revenue, however, reduced by 22.8%. MTN's profit before tax ending the third quarter of this year reached almost 3 billion Ghana cities, compared to 1.9 billion Ghana cities for the same period last year. MTN also paid 2.1 billion Ghana cities in direct and indirect taxes to the states and then September this year. MTN over the past month had been silent on how the e-levy had impacted on its business, but it appears this third quarter earnings has given us some details on how this tax has impacted on the business. More on communications because government through the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization will begin sanctioning chief executives and officials of state agencies using their private email addresses to conduct official duties. According to the Minister for Communications and Digitalization, Esla Wuswekufo, the practice has been a challenge for the management of information and safeguarding the government's database. This came up at the Technology Breakfast for Public Sector Workers in Accra. Here is a report. Government, through the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization, will begin sanctioning chief executives and officials of state agencies using their private email addresses to conduct official duties. Speaking at a technology breakfast meeting organized by the National Information Technology Agency, NITA, and the State Interest and Governance Authority in Accra, Minister for Communications and Digitalization, Esla Uswekufu, hinted that government has procured a smart working suite from Microsoft to support the entire public sector smart working initiative. She therefore warned the public servants who are found using their private emails for official duties by next year could lose their jobs. By the end of this year, all organizations working in the public and civil service should be on the Smart Workplace platform to use the secure email services that are on there. For starters, you use that and then you can build on for, with whatever um, needs that you, 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 you have in your organization. Now, for the CEOs and public service officers, as we're writing it into the business processes in the public service. If you don't use the secure email services, you could lose your job because you're compromising the security of the entire organization's data. And you can't, we can't allow individuals to put our entire systems at risk. In other parts of the world, they've written it into the, the operational codes and manuals of the organizations. And that's why we're here with the head of civil service and with SIGA. Director General for NITA, Richard Autry Fosu, raised concern about the inability of state agencies to use the infrastructure provided to encourage smart working. He assured that the agency is well positioned to provide all digital services for the public sector. The has invested in a tier three national data center and it is not shabby at all. This is a powerful investment that government has made and unfortunately 
government agencies are not taking advantage of it. Almost 75% of our customer base are private sector. Government developed this thing to help government agencies, but we are not taking advantage of it. So I appeal to you that after today's meeting, my office and my doors are open. If you want to take a tour of the National Data Center, please let me know. I'll personally do the tour. Sunday, weekends, you call me, I'll come and take you around so that you can see the infrastructure that government has built that we are not taking advantage of it. But I would say that if it's good for private sector, it's definitely good for government. So we should embrace it and take advantage of it. The state interest and governance authority has charged chief executive of all the agencies to ensure that their institutions are on board the smart working space to reduce cost of operations. You're still watching Business Life with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Let's now pause for some break. When we return, we've got more for you. Welcome back. This is Business Life with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Players in the rise value chain within the African continent have resolved to build a robust framework that would ensure a sustainable way of reducing the import bill of rice within the sub-region. Speaking at a stakeholder meeting and the launch of the Competitive Africa Rice Platform, third or Chief Director of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Robert Inkobia, urged players in the sector to support the consumption of locally produced rice to help reduce the high import bill being recorded in the country. There's more in the following report. Over 9 million tons of rice are imported into the West African sub-region, representing about $3.4 billion of import bill in 2021. Speaking of the stakeholder meeting in the launch of the Competitive Africa Rice Platform Ghana, Chief Director of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Robert Nkobia, urged players in the rice value chain to help support the consumption of locally produced rice in the country to reduce the high import bill. Now, Ghana's local rice now is very competitive all over. You can hardly even tell the difference from um, the imported rice. There's been a lot of improvement in the packaging, the quality, and that is what is important. The ministry, under its mechanization program, has imported a lot of um, milling equipment so that, you know, that's critical. If you are, if you are going to be competitive, you should be able to mill your rice in such a way that you get the best quality. A lot of it has been imported as part of our mechanization program, you know, and farmers now, at least uh, uh, comparatively, have easy access to these millers. Oh. Chairman of the Competitive Africa Rice Platform Ghana, who is also the convener of the Rice Millers Association of Ghana, Yao Edupoku, stated that local rice farmers are facing difficulties leading to the destruction of the rice at the farm gates due to the lack of storage facilities. We are, our yield on the farm is nothing to write home about. And so our price keep on rising even above the import ones because we are not getting the right yield. After that, the harvest is not well looked after. And so we have a big percentage of it going into waste. And that also tells on the price that comes to the market. Once we have storage facilities, which we had been talking and advocating all this while, we will be able to get that one out of the way. And then rice could be assessed throughout the year. On her part, British High Commissioner to Ghana her Excellency Harriet Thompson pledged her commitment to support the localization of rice production to meet the demand from the continent. The UK government's commitment to supporting domestic production, regional trade and domestic production of rice right here in West Africa. When I came to Ghana, I was amazed by some of the figures around this. 2.6 billion pounds sterling of rice are imported into West Africa. That's money that could stay here, that's jobs that could be created here. So we're really happy to be supporting this Collaborate effort, collaborative effort here today. Now, Amantia West Rural Bank is extending its representation in the financial market by rebranding to Amantia Rural Bank PLC. The new brand representation is geared towards re resonating with all targeting communities of the bank in the Amantia enclave of the Ashanti region. 
Board Chairman Ben Kwachi Adafe is confident the new image will revitalize the bank's operations and deliver higher returns to the business. Nana Yaojima was at the unveiling of the annual general meeting of the bank and filed this report. The Royal Bank started operating in 1983. The bank presently has a total investment of over 210 million CDs. Management of the bank has, since its inception, managed to keep it in profitability. Board Chairman Ben Kwache Adiefe says the rebranding is to keep up with modern banking trends. We are also doing so to renew our corporate identity in terms of our products and our services, in terms of our color, in terms of our performance, in terms of the relationship that will exist between the bank and its stakeholders. We are also doing so to revitalize the operations of the bank to be efficient and deliver higher returns to the various stakeholders. Indeed, we have been very careful and very prudent in making sure that all that we are doing will not be a waste. At the bank's annual general meeting, a 16% increase in profit margins was announced, representing 55.8 million cities for the 2021 financial year. Investments stand at over 83.2 million cities, representing a 9.15% rise from the previous year. Despite economic challenges in the year, a total dividend of 926,000 will be paid to shareholders. Frederick Kwachiche is chief executive officer. We were able to pull this profit due to hard work, increasing our revenues from a lot of um, commissions and then also credit and investments. And then also we were able to curtail the expenditure and that catapulted us to obtain a favorable profit in the year 2020. Meanwhile, board chairman Mr. Kwache Adiefe has assured customers of better service in the coming years. We want to assure our customers, our shareholders in general, and all stakeholders that we will make sure whatever deposit that they make with their bank will be protected. In fact, we have a very strong and dedicated board which also advises and gives directions to management. And management is also well out to also implement whatever decisions and advice that we also give them. For Joy News, Nanae Aojima, Kumasi. And that's it for Business Life with me, Pius Kujubaka. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business.